Hello, everybody. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. Before we get into the episode today, I did want to take a moment to give a viewer shout out to one of our viewers here, one of our friends here on Esoteric Atlanta named Tracy Woodman. Now, like Adam, whose book link is down in the description box below, Tracy is also an author. And um, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of information about Tracy because she has written some pretty interesting books about mind crimes, which seems to be pretty much the gist of this great awakening, right? So Tracy said, when I was a little girl, I would sit on my bed and write stories. I don't know what happened to them. Sometimes I wish I'd saved them, if only to have a good laugh. I'm sure they weren't very good. I mean, I must have been maybe 11 at the time, but I remember I wanted to grow up to be a writer. And to be honest with you, Tracy, that's what I wanted to be when I was a little girl too. When I was in the fifth grade, I wrote a book called The Golden Glow Cookie Jar. My mom still might have that book somewhere. We had to write it. I think it was in the fifth grade. It was for some competition and I actually won the award for the best story. I wrote a story about a cookie jar that a little girl finds in a new home. And this cookie jar glows this golden color. Every time it glows, she would open the cookie jar and there would be an item in the cookie jar that if she picked it up would transport her back to historical moments in time. So even in the fifth grade, I was a little bit of a history nerd. But Tracy, I totally feel you. I was the same girl. What started out as a challenge to write a book so I could say I wrote a book became a hobby and is now the fulfillment of a childhood dream. In the past few years, I have written three books, two of which are part of what is called Operation Mind Crimes series. I'm working on book three now. Some may call this series historical fiction because it deals with our recent history. The stage is set by revisiting the politics of the 1960s. Many may think that I, what I write is conspiracy theory. That's okay. Although I can tell you that most of what I've written is verifiable. The spirit series exposes some of the secret government programs, such as the story is told from the viewpoint of a young family who was first affected by the Vietnam struggle, then by the realization that the government is using college students, women, and children as experiments to find ways to manipulate the mind. Mind control, brainwashing, manipulation, manipulating the mind, call it what you will. The lives of the Stewart family are permanently altered due to these programs. The stories which expose these truths is told from the perspective of the Stewart family. Although the family is fictitious, much of which they experience has happened in real life. By reading the series, you will be sharing their experiences and emotions of living through these times. I know many who were in the military during the Vietnam struggle. Many hesitate to read the series because they don't want to relive the pain. I understand completely. I want to let you know that the books mostly tell the story of what went on in the States and as witnessed by civilians. There is a chapter towards the end of the first book, The War Within, that might be painful to read. If you do want to read the book, please note that chapter 45 does take place in the Pacific. It is a short chapter. You might want to skip over it, although there is some important information in the chapter that rounds out the story. I am not a veteran. So no matter what I've done for research, I will never understand what you went through. I try to do justice to all the veterans in the series and will continue to do that as a series evolves. I dedicate the first two books to the military and those who have suffered due to crimes. My heart goes out to all of you. In addition to the Operation Mind Game series, I am writing other books. Remember the Kiss tells the story of a second chance while incorporating the idea of reincarnation within the lives of the characters. I'd like to thank Nora Jones for allowing me to use her song, Come Away With Me, in the book. If you are interested in learning more about my books, you can visit my website at www.authorlywoods.com. On my website, you will find my recent work, and you will find the works that will be coming soon. You can read my blog and find my research page. I share the research page so you can see the resources I use when writing my book. You will find many links where you can navigate your, your way to begin your own research as you continue to awaken while remembering to continue to work on yourself, as Bryce says. I want to thank all of you who support my work. While I write fiction, I will try to be sure I incorporate the element of human emotion into my work. My desire is to bring out the best in humanity, even if the situation is dire. I'm hoping to bring healing through what I write. It may take me a little while to realize what the, that looks like but I will continue to work towards helping all of us to move into the light. 
Thank you so much, Tracy. I will be placing all of Tracy's links down in the description box below. I myself am looking forward to reading your series. And I want to say too, if there's anybody else out there that has some work that they would like for me to advertise on this channel, please email me. This channel isn't just about me. It never has been just about me. This channel is about us. We are all just walking each other home. And so I am so proud to be able to showcase anybody's work, especially any person that's out there working for the betterment of humanity. All right, guys, on to the show. Hello, we back, we back, we back, we back, we back. We were just on Aquarius Rising Africa earlier this morning. We had a grand old time with our friends Shanti and Mornay. If you guys get a chance, go and give them some love. We know that the stakes are quite high right now and we're experiencing conquer and divide mentality from those bloody old infantrators that we just um can't seem to get to get rid of and so i just myself i can i think i can speak for you too stephanie when i say i consider chante and morning 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 <laughs> chante and morning to be like legitimate friends like they're not just people that we film with you guys chante and morning are not just people we film with they are our friends we speak to them off camera all the time we bond with them off camera all the time they are just as lovely and happy and kind off camera as they are on camera correct stephanie oh yeah absolutely and they are here and shanti is full of ancient wisdom and knowledge beyond what i've heard from a lot of people in this great awakening and um she's truly an inspiration for those who want to go into healing i i think and Mornay, he's just a sweetheart. He's a sweetheart. He's, he's, he could take the worst of anything and just brighten it up into a ball of goodness. Like he's like he's like that 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 King Midas energy turns everything to gold kind of a thing. He just sees the good in everything. Do you know when I see Mornay, Mornay do you, every time he signs on before we start recording, do you know what, that, what image I get in my head when I first see Mornay? The what? sun card in the traditional tarot deck. Yeah. Because he's just, just a ball of sunshine. He's the sun card. He literally, <laughs> you're the sun card. Well, hashtag, we're going to create a hashtag. Mornay is the sun card of the tarot deck. Um, and, and Shanti her, could be high priestess. Yes. Well, and they, oh, I think I think Shanti's Aphrodite because that girl is just powerful. And, you know, they they don't, they are, they are the same off camera as they are on camera. Everybody oh. I film with is the same off camera as they are on camera. They're not trying to be anything. They're not. I'm just more obnoxious off camera. Just saying. <laughs> no, no. Um, I'm, 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 I'm boisterous. I'm um, a bundle of joy. <laughs> All of us, every single person I film with got on YouTube to try to make a difference to try to help in any way we could, because we know that this, I mean, Stephanie, I think last night you and I were kind of frustrated. We were venting to each other. And I said, I said this to Shanti this morning before we started filming, I was like, I feel like I'm in the middle of a big class project and half of the class is not doing their homework, you know? And that's, and I was so frustrated last night. And I think, I think what's happening too. And I, I just want to say, because we are going to talk about tarot cards and yoga today. Um, before we get started, if you are a troll, and you are not happy with yoga or tarot cards, that's fine. But please do not hurl abuse on our channels. We're not coming to your channel saying anything to you. If your God is so much better than the God you think we serve, then don't behave in that way because you're not, you're not representing your faith in the greatest of lights. People who are hurt, hurt other people. You don't anybody who tries to censor is not serving a God of light either. God doesn't censor. No, like, we need to get out of this rigidity. I'm not saying make it a free for all and do what you freaking want. I mean, obviously have a moral compass, but you know, I spent, I think coming from me, like I've spent years in the church and 
if any entity or any establishment has been the nastiest to me, it's been the Christian church. And that's, that's why I'm so boisterous about it. And I, I didn't go into tarot cards to be rebellious against the church. I was still going to church reading tarot cards. And my pastor did find out and it was not, he didn't say anything to me, just, you know, kind of gave me looks. But anyways, um, yeah, long story for another day. But anyways, I, I didn't do it to be rebellious against the church. I did it because God literally told me I have a specific mission that involves using tarot cards. And I hear from God very, very strongly. I always have. And every time I listen to the voice of God, it gets me through. There is something it, it never makes any sense to me. Like Tamara says, your gut instinct never makes sense. So true. So true. Making a channel didn't make any sense to me. I don't even know what I was going to do a channel on. I didn't have any intel. God's like, yeah, you're making a spiritual channel. Still didn't know what that meant, but I did it anyways. And then the next task was to connect with you, Bryce. Didn't, didn't make sense to me. Actually, I didn't even think you talked to me, <laughs> but here we are. You're later. <laughs> and uh, so, and then, you know, before I even made a channel, God was like, you need to use tarot cards. And I'm like, what the hell for? I don't, I, there's no way I can memorize all these cards and what they mean. And here I am reading them. And not only that, I'm now teaching it. So, I mean, God is going to give you messages and they're not going to be, it's not going to be a whole novel full of information. It's going to be little droplets of information. You've just got to follow your gut. But my gut had told me you need to get out of the church because you need to remove yourself because of the mission I have for you. I have plans for you and plans to not harm you, but to prosper you yeah. as the precious Bible says, right? Guess what? Absolutely correct. That is a part of the Bible. I actually do believe. Well, and this you know? is what I want to say too. Like if you still don't understand that the church is part of the club is part of the controllers then I'm sorry, you're not awake. You haven't woken up. That's the tippity top. Of That's it, the yeah. tip of it. And, and I'm going to say this. If you're, follow, if you're still after all the evidence that has come out about how the Bible has been manipulated, how it's been changed, how things have been removed and added in and inverted, if you're still believing the propaganda, then you are no different you are no different than the people who still believe and support the propaganda of Dr. F. And that's all I'll say. You're no different. Dr. F and the church answer to the same boss. Yep. They I'm answer the same exact club. You don't We're not a part of it. I'm not a part of that club. If you don't believe me, follow the money in the seminary schools. Where are they getting their funding from? It's not that hard to really find. It's right in front of your face. Right in front of your face. And I think most of our subscribers understand this concept. I think it's people who follow, um, you know, other people who are promoting the fundamentalist agendas. Um, I, when I first got into this uh, truther um, thing, whatever you want to call it, movement, I was following certain people that were on the more religious uh, part of things only because guess what? At the time I was still very much a part of the Christian faith. And it's interesting because I started to, then I started to follow you, Bryce. And because of Bryce, I'm the one that actually started to second guess the church because of all the missing books of the Bible. And oddly enough, the first uh, episode I think I watched of you, Bryce, that really got me hooked on your channel was the Gospel of Mary Magdalene. Go figure out of all of them, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't the Apophrica or what, whatever, the whatever Apocalypse of Abraham or whatever that was. It was the, the Mary Magdalene Gospel. And when I started to listen to it, it was super mystical, right? And more on the uh, um, Eastern philosophy type of stuff yeah. that we often now talk about. And I was like, so I started to naturally question these things and start, I literally do dove into my own research. And by that time I created the channel and then I started to deep dive into what the name Jesus really meant. And that's actually what got me on the dark outpost. And 
I mean, all these things started to happen. So I didn't just take Bryce's word for it. I actually went and did my own research on everything. And I was just like, I was mind blown. And I went through a period of horrific anger because that was a huge part of programming that had to collapse out of my soul. And the thing was, I was so worried that there was no such thing as God. And, and I started to think that I was lied about even just the fact that there's God and everything was just falling apart and crumbling. But that's, that's kind of what happens before you can then pick up the pieces and start creating a new you, right? You have to have that friction as you say, Bryce. So I, I realized within a very quick span of a week, there is such thing as a God. And now I'm actually closer to the real God. And I want to talk about that for except, except for a, for a second. And the next installment of the Divine Sophia, she talks about this, but I want to really hammer in on this because she talks about the difference between transcendence and eminence. And this is super important and kind of boils down to the crux of what's happening. The Abrahamic faiths, so Christianity, Islam, Judaism, are based around a concept that's called transcendence. This means that they're telling you, and I know from the Christian faith, that's my experience, that you are nothing without God and that you have to invite God into you and that, but that might not be enough. And you're not going to really know if that's enough until you die and you're in that judgment room one day. And, you know, you are just a piece of shit on the ground and nothing in the world is of God, you know, but imminent says the opposite. Now let's talk about transcendence for a moment. So when you have a philosophy where you are a pathetic piece of shit without God, that maybe in this God that's like judgmental and, you know, one day he's a loving God, the next day he's saying he's a jealous God and all this kind of stuff. And a God that would sacrifice his own son. Like how batshit crazy is that? That's the God they're having you worship. It's going to cause anxiety. It's going to cause fear. It's going to cause panic. You're going to see nothing loose you're going to see nothing as sacred it's going to cause war what three main religions are the biggest warmongering religions in the world abrahamic there is more blood on the christian faith than any other religion any millions have died in the name of christianity been murdered now when we look at eminence what is eminence eminence means that god is everywhere that God is in you already and that God is in the tree and that God is in, in the, your dog, your dog's eyes. God is in the cry of a baby. God is in the bird chirping outside. God is in the raindrop that falls from the sky. And these are the, the, the teachings of the Eastern philosophy of yoga, of Buddhism. I want to say something real quick if I can. Mm -hmm. When I read these cards, I think a lot of people look at it as, oh, she can read cards. She has a connection with God. I'm getting messages. Here's the deal. No, that's not how it works. When I read the cards, I am channeling a uh, God creator. Absolutely. And I might channel from uh, a deceased loved one. And I do have the ability to channel. That doesn't mean that the person I'm reading for doesn't also have that gift either. Because we're born with the ability to do so. We, have an, we are an antenna and we're also a magnet. We're a magnet to Mother Earth. Or an antenna to God. Okay. I'm not the only one that can do this, nor will I be the last one that can do this. Also, the only thing that comes out of these cards is what your soul already knows. Yeah. Hence I'm not giving answers. Other people. Hence why we don't read other people. I'm not giving answers. I'm just giving a confirmation to somebody. So when someone lights up like a Christmas tree when I'm doing a reading, yeah. You channeled, by the way, you knew the answer. You, you channeled God before I channeled you. I just want to make that clear. We are born with the gift to you're hear part, from God. God. The Holy Spirit. Stephanie, why in the Bible does it tell people to wear their hair long? Because it's an antenna to God. Interestingly enough, my son hated his haircut. He hates his haircut. I couldn't figure it out. Until I started to realize my son is extremely psychic. Now, right? My son is very yeah. psychic. Now, something happened. I think it was the Kiwis of New Zealand. Their warriors always wore their hair long. And they were able to navigate the sea no problem. 
no problem. The minute they the colonization came in and cut their hairs off, hair off, guess what happened? They couldn't navigate the sea anymore. There are things, there are esoteric things that they're not teaching us. And I hair don't, is also so sacred that in a lot of Native American, whatever that means, tradition, the woman or even the men, I believe, even they have to braid their hair to protect it or something. There's something sacred behind braiding the hair because it is the antenna to God. Um, I know everybody just thinks it's the third eye. There's more to it. There, there's there's the a whole lot body more. is a third eye. The whole body. And that's why you also want to ground yourself because you're also the magnet, which then ignites the antenna. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the Rastafarian faith. The Rastafarian faith is based off of one love. It's one, it's the it's the reggae music. It's that's an actual religion. Yeah, Bob Murray in my head now. Well, they they do what what do they do with their hair? Dreadlocks. Dreadlock it. Part of their faith. And so this is this is part of eminence. And this is what yoga is teaching. And this is what Mary Max, so the missing books of the Bible, the real teachings of Yeshua and Magdalene, because guys, I know this is gonna piss people off, but I, I beg you, I beg beg of you if this triggers you to study the council of nicaea go study it yashua never said he was a god yashua never said that they called him the teacher. teacher rabbi teacher. rabbi he teacher. was a guru he transmuted he didn't personally transmute darkness to light for anybody but himself but he taught you how to do it Oh, I want to bring up something now that we're talking about this. So in my studies, I'm, I'm starting to um, study into some stuff. Okay. I'm not going to say what yet, because I'm not given a green light yet. Um, and I was studying in the, the word savior. Oh, the church lied about the word savior. Because actually savior truly means, oh God, what did I say it me meant yesterday? When I an enlightened one who does not need to reincarnate. That's right. It's somebody. So we, the, the term born again that we hear in church, it's not saying the sinner's prayer. And that's going to piss people off, but it's not the sinner's prayer. That's not being born again. It's not believing Jesus died on a cross for your sins. That's not being born again. Born again means your soul has to evolve enough to where it is got peace within itself, no matter what is happening to it. Right? So pure enlightenment is even if you are naked in the middle of a snowstorm, you're still at peace. Your 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 consciousness has found samadhi, so found oneness, yeah. oneness with God, and that's what Yahshua and Magdalene found. I'm telling you guys, Yahshua and Magdalene are not on the earth right now because it's not. They don't need to be here. Yeah, no, that's not their karma. It's not this isn't their karma. Yeah. If you if you still think that someone else can die for you, then you're no different than Jeffrey Epstein. That's, that's a satanic that's worship. That is so fucked up. That is a human. You are you are worshiping a human sacrifice. Nobody what do you think communion is communion is nobody the in the blood. No one can fix your karma for you, nor should they, guys. Let me talk to you about original sin. Hold on one second. I'm just going to pull this up because it's going to come up this week. But let's talk about it for a second. I know this is going to trigger people, but it needs to trigger people because it's the fucking truth. All right. So Saint Augustine was the person who who coined the term original sin want to know why because he was doing it he was having relations with an 11 year old he was a hedonist so he decided that sex is the original sin and that even if you actually sacred yeah, and if you spend your whole life celibate, you're damned anyway because Adam and Eve had sex. That's where that comes from. Constantine lived in the 4th century. Or excuse me, Augustine lived in the 4th century, same as Constantine. So you are worshiping and holding on to the teachings, and I'm going to have to blurt this word out, of a fucking pedophile. If you're clinging to this idea of original sin and that some human's going to have to sacrifice themselves to clarify that sin, do you not see how satanic that is? Christianity is, Magdalene told me a long time ago that I needed to research what Christian actually means. 
We have been told that Christian means to be Christ-like. But I'm going to ask you guys who call yourself Christians, just a question. Have you ever researched what Christian means? Or are you just taking someone's word for it? Stephanie, did you ever research what the term Christian meant? No, not yet. You know what it means? What does it mean? I'm, I'm curious. To steal the Christ. Oh, son of a beeswax. Holy crap. Mic drop. Okay, so why are we talking about this? Let's uh, we're talking about this because there's a lot of smearing going on with channels like ours and a bunch of other people we know who we dip our toes into this, well, I guess we call it the esoteric woo of stuff and everything and the, um, you know, things like kundalini and chakras and yoga and tarot cards and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, most of the people who are view us, they get this, right? Yeah. I mean, there are those few out there. So we're not yelling at the mass majority. We're not yelling either. It's just more or less like we cannot ascend as a collective until a certain amount of people get through their heads that this is what's holding us back. The church is holding us back, guys. That is why so we share this. Share, share this, this with this a friend. Is, let's verify with the tarot cards. Uh, while a pull, can you pull cards on that? Is the church, the, the, the church indoctrination is what's, that's, that's the cabal's last hold. The politics are falling apart. Because a lot of people in this truth or community or the 17th letter of the alphabet back channel stuff. Okay. First of all, I think that was infiltrated because it tells you popcorn too. and all that bullshit nonsense. But, um, those on this side of the, the, the WAR, a lot of them are Christian and you know what? Whatever you want to believe is what you want to believe. However, I'm just going to say, for the record, Earth is going to split. There's going to be a positive and there's going to be a negative. And if you are threatening people, maliciously going after people because they believe in something different than you believe, you are polarizing negative. Yeah. And yeah, you will go to hell. And that, that's what hell is, the, the, the fourth density uh, negative because uh, it's going to implode on itself anyways because they they can't stand afloat and then there's going to be the positive yeah and then the people sure. remo getting the people that are are um are uh not exactly surviving the earth right now if you get my gist they're probably the ones that have to go to 3d again well i'm going to say this too as she pulls cards so we look at the idea of stealing the christ versus transcendence and eminence christ is something we all have inside of us you are the christ you carry the Christ. Yahshua taught that it's the Christ consciousness. It's the Kundalini power rising that connects you to, that connects you to God. That's what Yahshua and Magdalene taught. And so what the church did is they came and compensated that and made a transcendence that it's something you have to bring in. Um, what does Yahshua translate to in, in English? Joshua. Joshua. It does not translate to Jesus. So where the fuck did that name come from? That's what you have to be asking yourself. Two different, is, huh? Jesus means, Jesus is like, literally means hail Zeus. Yeah. And that's what I mean. I, I did you know what, so hours so, of research on that. Do you know when, when Zeus's birthday is? It's December 25th. 26th. Oh, 26th. Mithra is the 25th, if the 25th though. If you're still not, if you're not questioning your religion, you're not awake. I know there's infiltration in yoga. I know what it is. I know exactly where the infiltration comes from. I've researched all of it before even going into it. And sorry to the, to the Bible beaten Christians, but Yahshua taught yoga to his followers. There's missing. And he was a Reiki practitioner too. He was a Reiki practitioner. They're in the laying the books. hands on. So let, let, let's just, let's just put this in, in, uh, let's, let's, I'm trying to think of the words. Okay. I feel like we're in the middle of uh, Mercury retrograde for two seconds there. It was not coming out right. So, Yahshua, it says in the Bible, Jesus laid his hands on the sick and the weak and the meek and the whatever, the weary, okay, and healed them. Now, for those Christians out there, if someone were to do that right now, you would tell them they're a witch from hell, right? So where did this concept come? 
that's what Reiki is. That's, that's what, what Reiki Yashua is. Did. And didn't Yahshua say, you will do these, these things greater than me? And you will do them better than me. Boom. And here we are. So if he's so if he's God in the flesh, how are we able to do it better than him? Because we're also God in the flesh. We are also children of God. We are the same. We are the same as Joshua and the same as Magdalene. That's what he was telling you. We got to stop with the hate. Stop with the hate. So I hate sent you a such picture. an ugly vibration. It's such an ugly vibration. I sent you a picture of from the Magdalene manuscript that's going to air tomorrow where Magdalene was talking about the seven demons. What did she, do you remember what she said? When someone mm -hmm. asked her about that? That was Joshua clearing her seven chakras. And then she goes on to say what the church won't tell you is I did it to him too. We cleared each oh, other. By the way, chakras. I want to put this out there. Fun fact, fun fact, fun fact. The seven seals in the book of Revelations are the clearing of the chakras, seven chakras. There you go, seven seals. Sorry, sorry. I just have to bring light to all this. Um, according to this, yes, the church is definitely... Also, I don't know. It's there's a it, there's a mixture of things, but it's like it's taking the good. So the high priestess I'm getting is like the mystery or the the secrets of the church establishment, which covers up money. By the way, it's it's a money cover up. Okay, oh, no shit. Look how rich the churches are. Like no shit. There, you can't be that fucking rich and not be part of the club, guys. It's it's, it's trying to f up the timeline. Okay, yeah. Just saying. Listen, and, Steph, and I want to ask Steph and I, there's no, there's no two people out there in the world that love God more than Steph. Oh, since I was in diapers, I like, listen, I knew things about God without people teaching me as a kid. I would come out with things and people would go, what on earth? How does she know that? Nobody taught me. Why? Because when you're a child, that's the closest to God you are because nothing, nothing has messed with this yet. Do you know that, that the Hindus teach that? You know that Hindus teach that children are the closest things to God? They are. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I, somebody asked me yesterday, why are we so hateful to Hindus? They're not causing war in the world. Why do you think they use children for the nasty things that they do? Because they're the closest to God. They can't create anything. So they got to use something as close as a child. Listen, and the reason why Stephanie are being kind of harsh in this video is because we want you to wake up. We want you to be liberated. And Literally again, we know yourself. it's not, it, we know it's not most of our subs yeah. or yeah, our, yeah, our yeah. extended family. We're, we don't like calling you guys subscribers. This is more or less for you guys to actually share this video. Yeah, I'm, okay? I'm tired. Stephanie's tired. We're fucking I'm exhausted. exhausted. I'm you just want, like, I want this flip to happen yesterday. Like I, I, it's, I'm it's getting so to the point where it's, it's getting to the point. I don't even know how to explain it. I, it, it's like, I want to rip the hair out of my head at this point, because it's not that I have a lot to rip out, but well, we're going to, as an expression, I mean, Stephanie, you know, you know, you out of you, you're a handful, you're a, a handful of maybe two or three people that know everything I've been through this past year. Yeah. I'm, I'm fucking ready. Aren't I for this to be over? And it's, it's, if you, <laughs> If you still think there's going to be someone that's going to come save you, that's another matrix training, another indoctrination. We all have to free ourselves. We have to liberate ourselves. If you want to be in the Christ, be in the Christ. You're already in it. You don't have to invite. And I said this, and we've said this, what are people doing now when they're inviting Jesus into their heart? Because Yash the Christ is already there. You were born with it. So what are you inviting in? And is this why fundamentalists are so freaking evil? And since so when I was a Christian, it was the angriest I ever was. I was such an angry person. So angry. My son even had commented and said to Bryce, how much happier I am. I took her son to, I won't say where. One day I took him and got him some junk food that maybe Stephanie didn't want him to have, but I'm a cool aunt. So, and we were driving back home to Stephanie's house and Tyler was like telling me, because I don't think he'd ever tell Stephanie you know, he's a teenager. Just how I much, don't know. He tells me quite a bit how much he just loves his mom so much more that she's just changed. She's, she's happier. She's lighter. It's liberating when you realize there's nothing you can do to piss God off. Well, there's nothing you can do to. to I was freed out of a jail cell. A jail I, I, felt cell. Like, 
I felt like I had been incarcerated for I don't know how long and, and somebody took the key and opened it. And okay? nobody, nobody is going to do and this book. She talks about the She talks about how it turns us into like schizophrenic almost because we're under so much stress over something that we feel is out of our control. And that's our own salvation. You are already born saved. You are already born. full of God. Yeah. Your karma is just your work without, this is what I, you know, this is, we, we talk about this a lot and this is what I'm saying. Like, that's why there's no such thing as sin. Every mistake you make, everything you do that's bad, that's your friction. That's what you learn from without that. And if, and if you polarize negative, then likely you're going to have to actually live more lifetimes than someone who is polarized positive yeah. until you finally get that polarized negative is not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. And polarized negative. I mean, people make the, the conscious choice by, by serving Lucifer, all that kind of stuff. And, and according to law of one of, I, I believe it's the fourth density planet, the polarized negative can't make it past because it implodes on itself. And so then they have to come back again and, and figure it out until they can get into the positive mindset. So with that being said, as I've said, our souls are eternal. God doesn't care how long it takes you. You can't kill a soul. You can't kill a soul. Yeah. So, so, and God created that soul for a reason. And so this is so liberating, but we have, and I, I know, and I've said this, I said this to Shanti this morning before we started filming. I know there are people in the church that are good people that don't want to hurt anyone. And they're open-minded because they're good people. They have a good heart. The fundamentalists, however, have a hateful heart and they're using. Yeah, there's, their there's different types of Christians out there. I mean, Bryce and I, we know Christians out there who are such amazing people and you know who I'm talking about, you know? Um, and really have love in their heart, really want to, you know, help change earth going forward and, and stuff like that. And wh I'm not even harping on those people. It's not those people. And, you know, the, the, um, one of my past pastors, such a good man, such a good man. He wouldn't harm a soul. He was just indoctrinated. He was raised by his dad was a pastor and he went into his footsteps of doing the exact same thing. He doesn't know any better. So, you know, it's just pure ignorance and brainwashing. And so he would never, I remember going to him, his, his, the other pastor of that church harassed me all the time about living in sin and such. I went to this pastor living in fear for so long. And I finally sat down with him instead of the other pastor who was a female. And I asked him what his opinion on salvation was. And he said, why are you worried? He goes, you're fine. You don't have to fear. He goes, you have a connection with God. That's what matters. And I, it, it took me off guard because, you know, he never, he wasn't the doomsday type of pastor, right? He was such a good man, such, such a good man. I'm sure I could carry on a great conversation with him even today, even though my, my beliefs are a little bit on the different side now. But the other one, completely different story. It was like, oh, I, if, you, if you don't move out of where you are and stop living in this sin, you're not going to be saved. You're probably not saved. You're not going to get raptured, blah, 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 blah. Well, first of all, guess what? I'm already starting my rapture ascent. So <laughs> joke well, is let on me, her. Let me ask you this. So, so marriage in the legal sense is ordained by who? A minister. But who gives them the right to ordain in our world? The Vatican. The, not for Protestants. It's the cabal. Your marriage license is government. Yeah. I always thought that was a little weird that I had to get a marriage license. What for? Yeah. What so, for? so it's not when it sense to me. marriage in the God sense. There's no piece of paper involved. And you, and, and how fucked up is that, Stephanie? I'm sorry. I know you had an awful relationship with your son's father, but you got Tyler out of it. Well, I, didn't, I mean, look, I was engaged to him. Luckily, I never married him. My intuition was like, no, you are not marrying this monster. Um, I tried very hard to change him at the time because at 20 years old, I thought I could change someone to be good from bad. Um, but I learned very quickly that you can't change anybody but yourself. So if okay. I had hypothetically married the monster and I didn't happen to know why right now, I, don't I would pro 
I probably wouldn't have been alive. No, no, well, he would eventually like, have. So this pastor was telling Stephanie, which first of all, you don't have the right to tell somebody else what their relationship with God is. That's so narcissistic and psychotic that you think you have a right to condemn someone's soul when that's none of your fucking business. It's between that person. And so she's sitting there telling Stephanie that Stephanie's going to go to hell because she's living with a man. She has a son with a man, but what about Tyler? Does that mean that Tyler is a product of some awful thing? Well, in the church, they consider that a bastard, which is an abomination. Do you guys not see how fun? That's not the, I don't serve. I will say right now, I don't serve the same. So God. if my son was not meant to live, why would he have been created in the first place by God? Exactly. If I his soul say- was not, if his soul was not of God, according to what the church says as he's a bastard because he was born out of wedlock and conceived out of wedlock. Why was he still born then? Because God created his soul. God allowed me to conceive him, to carry him and to birth him in the portal. That is my womb. Yeah. So how is he not good enough? Because just because I wasn't married, it was a and damn God good thing I wasn't that. married. God never said that, did he? That was created by man. Man said that. And I'm just, I, I, I'm going to say right now, I don't worship the same God. No. That people that believe that worship, because that's Lucifer. That's Lucifer and that's Satan. The God that I believe in is a God. And that's, and I'm sitting here thinking, you know, Stephanie, back, I, I know that I'm a history buff on the, uh, the two of us, but you know, back a few hundred years ago, when divorce wasn't that common, if there was a divorce, the children out of that marriage were then deemed bastard too by the church. So children born into wedlock and then the parents split up and then the children are now labeled an abomination because the parents split up and the children have no control over that. Do you guys not see how fucked up this is? That's the church you're, and I'm sorry for the Protestants who think that you're separate from the Vatican. No, you're not. You're pa- the Vatican just called in all its money back. Your church is now having to give all its money over to the Vatican. <laughs> this is stuff. This is what I want people to do. And I want to like, I see the pain. I see the pain in Christian's eyes. And I want to hug you and say, this is not what Jesus or Yahshua taught. I had a gay friend in Los Angeles. That was so funny. He'd walk and look at the churches and he'd be like, if Jesus came back today, he would say, so not what I meant, guys. So not what I meant. And I think about that. If Yahshua was here, to be like, this is not what I was talking about. You guys missed the mark. Totally. I just want to reiterate too. Again, this is not a message for most of the people who watch us because they're, they get this already. Okay. But for the few, or if you decide to share this video, this is for those people who are still not getting it. And we're not trying to indoctrinate a totally different faith or anything like that. We're just trying to liberate and just explain that what we conceive, what we've been programmed to believe is everything has been poisoned. Mm -hmm. Whether it is the actual food we eat, the medicine we intake, the the water, the uh, belief system of the the MSM, but most of all, the, the head of the snake, which would be the church, which all runs, if you follow the money of every single church, every single church, it is all underneath the Vatican. And the Vatican literally is the head of the snake. And it's the head of this um, demonic pyramid of controllers. And it's got nothing to do with Yahshua. I mean, research the Black Pope. Yeah. Black Pope. I mean, and all the Jesuits, they they weren't created for good. Yeah. I think people look at the word Jesuit they see the name Jesus in it, so they don't think twice. And they don't. They, the thing is, if we start to take these words that they throw at us in our sermons or in the mainstream media, that our language is, by the way, eft. Okay, it comes from Latin. Latin is a not a good language. Um, and and by the way, any language is, is a spell casting, whether it's negative or positive. 
um, like the Sanskrit is the holy language. It's a positive language. There's a frequency, a vibrational frequency, which is why you practice yoga. And when you are uh, giving the the um, poses or the uh, as asanas, is mm -hmm. that how you say it? asanas? Yeah. You're, you're not you're not saying it in its English form because the English form does not hold the same frequency vibration as it does in Sanskrit. I don't know if you saw this and I'm going to point, um, th there was a subscriber of ours, a friend of ours who watched the practice and I did the opening chant. She, uh, he or she commented, um, she cried. She while cried. Driving, hearing the, oh, I, chant. I, I, uh, the opening chant get, gets me a little emotional too, because it's such a high frequency. You can all, feel the, you can feel it. When all the, the chants in Sanskrit and all it's asking for is that your poisons be removed. The student is asking for the poisons. So the thoughts, the attachments to be removed, mm -hmm. to be removed and that you're willing to have them removed. That's why we do it before our practice because that's how poisons are being presented. And yeah, so Sanskrit is a very, can very much pe make people very emotional, even if they don't know what it means because their soul understands it. Yeah. And I just, I, okay. I want, you know, and here's the thing too, like a lot of, and you're right. You said this at the beginning about censorship. We are not on the side of censorship at all. Period. Yeah. The story. Oh, Michael, Gabriel, I'm going to ask you to come in and watch this monitor. And I yeah. will say, and I can be, you said it right at, it, it started getting all funny when you said the word censorship. <laughs> they don't want me talking about this. Well, oh, well. about a year ago, um, Larry Gators, Bishop Larry Gators, who, allegedly is in the church. I, I believe he is in the church, but not how you guys think. That's my opinion. He loves his King James Bible and it doesn't take a scholar to research King James. It takes five minutes to find that King James was a Satanist and that openly, and he's a Freemason. He's still registered with the Freemasons on their website, King James. Well, I had that point when he made these threats was literally against me. I was literally just reading them. I mean, when I read the missing books on, of the Bible, I'm literally just reading them and talking about them with you guys. We're just discussing them. It's like a book club. Like, we, you know, and I've said multiple times when I've read these missing books, there's some missing books of the Bible that I love and some I'm not that much of a fan of, but I still read them because it's information. That's how I found out that Yahweh means Moloch. Stop saying your God is Yahweh. Stop it. Stop it. That's Moloch. It's a yeah, any any of those those words we see in the Old Testament, I kind of I question. Well, if you read the missing books of the Bible, it's very clear that that's who they're talking about is Moloch, not source creator. Stop saying that. Stop it. There's now, a lot of there's this video roaming around that apparently our DNA spells out the word Yahweh. No, it does not. And I'm just like, okay, okay. First but, of all, we got twelve strands of DNA, and how many are activated now, uh, Stephanie? Out of the twelve, two. two. So what do we even know what that looks like? Okay, so I also, so so at that point when Larry Gators made that threat against me, he said his job was to decapitate witches and he was coming for that witch Bryce down in Atlanta, Georgia, which is an open death threat, which was handled. It was very much handled. Thank you to the people who handled it because that was an open threat. Why would you be so angry against me for literally just reading books? You so making that threat is a, is a threat of censorship. What's in those missing books? Now, I personally believe, in my opinion, that Larry Gators is high up in the controllers, in the bad guys, in the cabal. He's an infiltrator. That's my opinion. So he was putting on this act that he was this big Christian and then threatening me, who literally, and around that same time, I was being praised by some of the military people on the back channels for actually taking the time to do this, which I was on the dark outpost when I literally on a live show was sitting there with David and all of a sudden the, that voice that's Magdalene that's been talking to me said, read the missing books of the Bible. And I looked at David Zublick on a live show and I said, Hey, want to read the missing books of the Bible? He goes, yeah, let's do it. That was Magdalene. That was God. That was source talking to me, telling me to do that. So what is so important in those missing books that the controllers are terrified of, that they would be threatening. You know what it is? Eminence. The fact that we have the ability to heal ourselves. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, I'm not going to give names. Stephanie is privy to just some of this. I've been privity, privy, privity. I think I just made up a word, privity. I've been privy to some information. And I'm just going to say, be very, very careful of the truthers that are promoting fundamentalist ideology. 
there is one platform in particular, I'm not going to say which one, that is owned and operated by the CCP. Stephanie knows which one it is. It's actually the very first platform I watched when I first woke up to everything. And guess what? A year ago, as of last, it was a year in July, I started to realize I was getting angrier and angrier and angrier every time I watched. If you're getting angry after watching something, that might be your soul trying to tell you something. Um, and Well, let's I, specify. There's a difference between being triggered and being angered. Yeah, like triggered, obviously, is completely. I don't consider triggering to be anger. This was an Okay, I'm going to put it to you this way. This was an anger where I felt like I was being duped. Okay, because there was always this, the title of their next show was most important show. You don't want to miss it. We have intel that nobody else has, but then they go to do their show and there was no intel. So they lied. Yeah. And they would bring people on their show that were batshit crazy. And then th that guest would do something to them. And then... Um, then they would bash that guest. One time somebody in the audience questioned something and they kicked her off the, the chat and then found where she lived and broadcasted it. So people, can her, which is yeah. a federal crime. And yeah. I'm sorry, if you're following the teachings of Yahshua and Magdalene, you would never dox anyone. You would never want to hurt them for dis just for disagreeing with you, just for disagreeing with you. Like guys, we need to stop, stop taking someone's word for it. I've said on my channel all the time, please, I present topics. I don't say I'm the authority on topics. I present them. And then we talk about it. And then people can research it. But here's the thing. They don't want you knowing this because the power of yoga, the Vedic text, this is what Yahshua taught. That's the real Christ stuff right there. It's in the missing books of the Bible, guys. And you will not feel close to God like you do when you are doing yoga. Uh, Magdalene's man or Magdalene's uh, gospel, which Megan Watterson, we've read that. I've read Magdalene's gospel multiple times now. She's going through yoga. She's going through the five kleshas, as we call them, the five traps of the human ego and how to work through them. That's yoga. Magdalene's not telling you that you're going to go to hell. In fact, Magdalene is basically saying the exact opposite. Like, relax. The real, the real truth. Sorry to interrupt you before I forget this. The real truth is not about where we go after death. That's not the real truth of it all. The real truth is about how to heal yourself and be at peace with whatever is brought to your soul. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. going through your own shit. And that's what yes. Magdalene was saying. Magdalene in this gospel, she's very emotional about it. She's very loving about it. And she's like, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with you. You're just dealing with what it's like to be a human. And you pick to come through to deal with that. So your spirit would grow and learn. The labels of disease are oftentimes self-inflicted because we have this propensity to be addicted by our ailments mm -hmm. and don't want to heal because then it gives us a reason not to do shit in life or it's what we put into our body which i know we wanted to talk about real quick um with the doshas real well, quick let's so let's segue first into the yoga with that and then we'll get into your course so um i of course am running an intensive right now are, are going to be i'm um, not right now in the moment on november the 20th it's going to start emmy and i spoke about it because stephanie was busy that day so emmy and i emmy's going to be part of it this is the first time i've ever incorporated a reiki practitioner into my yoga course and the reason why i did that with emmy specifically bringing her into the yoga course is because we're going to be doing it online only and so since i'm not there to be adjusting you and, and seeing you in person I wanted to give a modality with the course so people can start to feel because when, when Reiki is done to you, you can feel it. Can't you, Stephanie? You can feel the energy. And so I wanted to, we've already had a lot of signups and it is limited seating. So this is only for serious students though, only for serious students, because I am going to run it as best as I can. Like I would be running a real intent, an, uh, uh, not a, a, a in real life, like in a Shala intensive. And so I'm going to put the link down there to, to this course down in the description box. Um, 
This is the link. Uh, this course is designed for those new to yoga for, or for those who want to brush up on the ancient philosophy taught through the practice of yoga. So what do I mean by that? We are going to be going through the first and second pada of the yoga sutras very, very intensely in the course. You're going to have homework where you're going to be assigned a portion of the sutras to read during the week. And you're going to be required to take notes over it, to journal about it, to apply the sutras to your life. Um, you, we are going to be going through some Sanskrit, um, some Vedic chanting. Uh, we are going to be doing the sutras in Sanskrit, the sutras themselves, and then we'll discuss them in their English translation because English is my other dominant language. And so please be able to speak English. You don't have to speak Sanskrit. Obviously, you're going to be doing it with me. Um, and then we're also going to be talking about the chakra system the points of energy. And we're going to be talking about the bundas, of course, because that, that plays into it as well, and how to use the body as the tool to understand the spirit, because legit, that's all your body is. Your body is literally the tool that your spirit picked to understand itself. Uh, warts included. The warts are the best part. And we're also going to be going through the Ayurvedic dosha system, which I've talked about a lot on this channel, but I'm going to be working with individuals separately on this to look at war different worksheets so that each individual in the course has a better under. Now I'm not an Ayurvedic doctor, but I'm going to help you with some worksheets so that you can figure out your dosha and start experimenting with food. Now, um, as far as Ayurveda is concerned, the three modalities of life are breath, food, and vibration. We've talked about the vibration being the speaking, um, the breath we'll talk about in the course, but um, food, of course, comes back to the dosha system, as well as how to see your body when it exercises, when it does everything. I mean, Stephanie, you have like taken to this dosha system because it makes so much sense, doesn't it? I might not be happy with what I have to eat, but I'm getting more used to it. Bryce has said to me, I'm not a fruits and vegetables person. I'm more like heavier food type of person. But that's because, I mean, I'm a tri-dosha, which means I scored evenly on all three doshas when I took my dosha test. So I have earth, fire, and air, the vata, the pitta, and the kapha. And, uh, but what's been really off balance is my pitta. And I'm very heavily kapha, kapha. in terms of a lot yeah. of other stuff too. Now, do you want me to go into my story about my hair real quick? Well, uh, let me finish this up and then we're going to go into it because I'm going to okay. explain it. Um, so, guys, when you go, so this is course is going to be $500. This does include the two sessions that you get with Emmy as well. So that is included in the price. Okay. Now, with this, we are going to have two hours um, Sunday from Sunday, November 22nd. The last Sunday will be December 11th. And you will get smaller groups with me during the week to start going through the asana work. You will be given, again, homework every week. It's a very, it's, it's going to force you to really dig within yourself to start this journey. This journey is, um, again, for people who are been doing yoga for a while, but want to brush up on the philosophy and dig, dig deeper into the philosophy, or for people who are new and at the end of the course, I'm hoping that this will give you guys a, a better understanding of your own power of healing and what this is really about and also help you find a teacher because you're going to have the education to, to basically interview teachers for yourself. And so when you go to, to pay, you're going to pay it by this link. And then I'm going to have you put your name and your email to submit it here so that I have everybody's information so I can send you the Zoom link. You will be required before the course starts to purchase a, a copy of Sri Swami Satyananda's commentary on the Yoga Sutras. Again, I've said this many times. There are many great commentaries on the sutras. I would, if you're, if you really want to get into this, I would suggest getting multiple different commentaries. But for this course, I prefer using Satyananda's commentary. I really like his commentary. Um, Ram Das is great. Deskachar is great. Iyengar is great too, but he's just really, Satyananda really hits the nail on the head. So that is why I'm using his commentary for this course. But once again, I love the others as well, but this one for the course, if you want multiple copies, I have multiple copies, get multiple copies, but this one specifically for the course, the sutras are all going to be the same. They're going to, the sutras are going to be saying they're the Patanjali sutras. It's just the commentary that we're looking at because we're, we're, we, we want to break down these sutras. So, um, so yeah, um, you can email me at yoga online course at gmail.com. Um, if, if you have some questions, um, if you are in a country that does not have PayPal contact me, um, I'm working that out with a student right now on how to figure that out, but there is limited seating. So go ahead. If you want to, if you want to hold a spot, I would go ahead and, and apply to hold the spot. Um, uh, if, if, uh, yeah. 
So if you have any questions, just email me. Now, when we go back, let's go back and talk about the Ayurvedic system for a second, because that's going to be a huge part of this course. It's not just about the food as well, because the food is just, food is energy, the body's energy. So let's talk about Stephanie, for example, because I've been the one helping Stephanie. And Stephanie and I are very opposite. Even though I'm not tridosha, um, we have very opposite imbalances. So her imbalance lies in the Pentacapa element and my imbalance lies in the Vata. So our eating system is different. Now, what this means too, is that there are, we have a lot in common with our personalities, but there's also going to be stark differences in our personalities, depending on our leading. So Stephanie, what's, what's one of my biggest issues as a Vata? Your anxiety. And you see it in me, don't you? Mm -hmm. And where I'm like, whatever. We kind of balance each other out because I also need a little bit more fire under my ass or like more inspiration to kind of get motivated with certain things. And that's where I lack because of that kappa part of me. Kappas tend to be more lackadaisic. Not that we're lazy. It's not that it's more. No, well, kappas can be lazy. They, they can be lazy. Yeah. Okay. That's um, when they're, that's when they're imbalanced. Where vatsas are more got to get things done, got to get things done. And I'm just like, well, when it happens, it happens. So Bryce helps me as a friend where she's like, she inspires me to just, it's like a fire under my ass, really. Mm -hmm. And then I help her out in, in our friendship with, with getting a little bit more. <sighs> well, let's talk about that because Vata is air. So if we think about anxiety, it's cerebral, it's dry, it's rising and up of energy. So I tend to go up too much, whereas kappa is water and earth. So it's down. So that's why kappas tend to get lazy sometimes, um, that it, whereas vatas can overdo it. Vatas, um, you were telling me someone, Stephanie, in your life, that's, I'm not going to say the name, who's a vata, like a vata pitta like me. And this person runs like crazy. Where running for a vata pitta is the worst thing you can do for exercise. The worst thing. And now for, she's running with a mask on. For for kappas, I keep telling Stephanie that would be a great work for her. Is running? No, I'm good. I'm good. There's the kappa coming I'm out. I'm good here. with yoga. I'm good with <laughs> yoga right now. Let's not push it. <laughs> See, so so that's but that's you have to look at that. And, um, and so for Stephanie, like where her imbalance lies, that's where we have to negate it with food. Let food be thy medicine. And I will tell her, so Vata foods are cerebral foods. They're like fruits, vegetables, anything that grows on a vine. That's my favorite. I, I could eat fruits all day, vegetables all day. I love it because I'm Vata, but I can't eat that all day because it will engage in my anxiety. It will. You guys saw me with grapes. I can't do grapes. Like that's a huge Vata food. Yeah, station grapes out of all types of grapes. I swell up. My body can't do it. So when Stephanie says she hates the diet, most people who follow the dosha diet hate their diet. They hate it. I don't like my, when I'm, when I'm on a dosha diet, I have to eat more kappa based foods. I don't like kappa foods. I don't like heavy. I have to eat heavier foods, um, root, rooted vegetables, cooked potatoes, cooked sweet potatoes. I don't like that. I would rather do. So everybody on the, that's why I hate when people say, Oh, I'm an intuitive eater. I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God. No, 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 no. Because what's happening is you're good with the foods you crave. Most of the time are not the foods you need to be eating. Because uh -uh. that's your dosha talking. So you do get used to it, though. Yes, and I will say that I've told this to Stephanie. The, the more you follow the diet, you're going to start to feel so much better. Which I do. It's worth it. It's worth it. Now, tell them about your hair, Stephanie. Okay, so I've had hair loss, and when I say hair loss, guys, I mean significant clumps that were bigger than my hand in the shower. Okay, that were triggered oftentimes by stress. One was I had an IUD. I'm not going to, I'm just going to say what it is. And it started to come out. However, what it really truly boiled down to was the energy. Okay. So my story goes like, I, I actually, I got really, really sick back in April. And then about two months later, my hair started to fall out again this year. And I kept racking my mind like, not on any medication. I'm taking care of myself. I'm exercising spiritually. I'm not entrapped anymore. You know what I mean? And the, the, the rigidity of the patriarch, right? So what, what, what is going on with me? I'm not understanding this. 
Well, I remember talking, I'm not going to say her name, but I was talking to one of Bryce's friends in Georgia when I was down there in uh, June, July. And she was telling me, you know, she, she's a Reiki master and everything. And she was telling me that some foods actually can hold um, almost like, it's almost like it sucks your energy. It, it causes an energy block. And normally it's either on top of your head or in your navel. Well, when she said it, I sudden, this is going to sound really silly, but it makes a lot, it, it had never made sense to me up until recently. So I saw literally this vision of a potato sitting on my head. And I'm like, what the hell is this, right? Well, after doing more study into Ayurvedic eating, I can't eat potatoes. And guess what my favorite food in the whole world is? Potatoes. But I feel like friggin' hell after I eat a potato. And I, I love what? everything potatoes. I mean, every I could eat potatoes all day long. Well, three chips, times potato a chips. Yeah. And, and, you potato chips a lot. The, and that is the snack that gets me in trouble. Okay. I'm not going to lie. I could, I could take, I, I don't need candy or anything like that, but I love my potato chips. Well, the reason I had that vision of potato on my head is, was it was causing a blockage in the energy that allows my hair to grow. I have been without cup of foods now for two weeks and all my bald spots are gone. Yes. And so, for, but for me, potato is the best food for me to eat because I'm a vata. So that's Lucky. what I'm saying. There's Lucky. no food that's bad or good. It just depends on the person. It depends on, and, and, and no two vata pittas are going to be the same. No, no two tridoshas are going to be the same. It depends on where your imbalance is. And isn't, and that's so amazing. So yeah, cause, because food holds an energy. And so if the energy isn't helping you, it's going to hurt you. And so what does the body do to try to tell you? So it will do things like hair loss, obviously. Um, if you're eating foods that your body can't digest and absorb because it's going against what you really should be eating, like you're not getting nutrients, first of all. So you will. So for me, for instance, I was eating foods that literally it was like yeast in my gut. So what does yeast do to bread? It expands, expands, expands. Like Bryce, you ate the grapes in your stomach. You looked like you were three months pregnant. Yeah. Now, when I was eating things like potatoes, what would happen is my entire body swells up. Like literally my, my face swells up. I can't wear a bra because it hurts to wear one. I can hardly wear underwear because it hurts to wear, you know, anything. And I would, I oftentimes would wear really, really um, loose clothing, not because I didn't want to look good, but because... I literally couldn't, I have very sensitive skin. And so it would hurt to wear anything. And if I could walk around naked, I would, but that would be a very, very bad, bad idea and bad sight for most eyes to see. So just saying, but anyways, it, it, was, it was really taking a toll on me and I've lost weight, but I feel like I hadn't lost weight because it wasn't, it's not fat. It's not fat. It's literally swelling from the foods that I'm trying to digest, but can't digest. So your body just stores it. And I will say, so like uh, you keep saying like, so stuff like uh, low blood sugar, like that's very typical of a Vata, even though Vata is like me forget to eat. If I don't eat, I'll start to, to zone yeah. out. Michael, please come in, protect the zoom. Now, Stephanie has experienced this as well. But with her dosha makeup, she should not be experiencing this. So what was happening, Stephanie's dosha makeup, the way she's made up with the percentage wise, she's, she's one of the people that can go hours without eating and be fine. But what was happening, what she was feeling is again, because, is it doing, oh, and you froze. Yeah, you did too. It, yeah. All right. Let me re-say it. So that Michael. Oh, my, my internet connection is unstable for some reason. That's weird. Um. Yeah. Michael, Gabriel, please come in. Protect this, protect that. Actually, we want anything associated with uh, Mercury because Mercury is communication. Mercury, please come in. Odin, please come in. Secure the line. Secure the line. Project Odin, <laughs> come in. Um, <laughs> Thenceforth. Um, see how much fun it is not being in the church. <laughs> There's so many more outlets. Um, but look at my hair, though. Doesn't it look I a know. lot healthier? 
my skin looks healthier. Well, let's go back to the whole uh, like like a blood lost blood weight. sugar. So what I was saying before the internet broke up. So what Stephanie was telling me, looking at her percentage of what she should be, because I gave her the workshop worksheet that I'm going to give the people in the course, she should not be experiencing low blood sugar. And but I would what so was bad. Happening was that she was eating all these foods that her body could not digest. And so her body was not getting the nutrients that her particular body needed. And it so starving it, itself really, it was, it was really taking, starving. It was taking the food she was eating and pushing it to the side because it could, it was pushing it in the drawer because it couldn't do anything with it. It couldn't even digest it. So it wasn't like she was even passing it. She was just pushing it to the side and it was saying, okay, give us more. But the nutrients that Stephanie needs is not the nutrients that I need or anybody. It's, it's a, it's depends on your disposition. And so once Stephanie starts following the dosha plan, her low blood sugar, as the medical world would say, should go away. It's, it is already starting to, I mean, I get bouts of it here and there, but it's still my body calibrating itself because it's only been a couple of weeks. It's not going to be like overnight, like you're you're good to go but no, it'll take a while and, to detox. and my body is still processing things that i ate before that so you know yeah. it's well let's talk it's about that for so too. long i'm gonna put a link in my description box box below to health forces intestinal movement formula and this is a herbs this is a capsule of herbs that stephanie's taken i've taken it before i've done this um and i told stephanie holy crap literally holy crap the stuff that is going to come out of you, your colon is going to start like almost, it's almost like a dusty shelf. It's going to hold on to particles of food that you ate like 10 years ago that it can't digest. And what let's this, be clear too. We're not giving any medical advice. No, this is just, and, and I, yes, I've I been the help force and it, the first time I did help force intestinal movement formula knocked me on my ass. This is not a cleanse in the sense that you're going to be, the only way you should be eating is for your dosha. I'm not telling you to stop eating, to fast, all that kind of stuff. Especially if you're vata like me, you should not be fasting. You should not be going without food. Stephanie as a kappa could definitely do a fast if she wanted to once she gets everything stabilized. But vata should not, when you go on a I fast every single, I, after my last meal at night, I do like a daily fast. I don't eat anything until about... 11 30 12 o'clock well maybe. that's what i do as well because we do do want to have so if you're vata like me you're not going to be able to go like days without eating like a proper fast like do the five days some people can do like a five day fast if they're kappa based our friend natalie is very kappa based and she can fast um in the way that she she can go days without eating if she wants to now um but you should give your diet and that's one thing you did different too stephanie and i i, I had touched this before like i stopped eating at like between four and five o'clock, I stop eating. And then I practice early in the morning. And then I usually, my first meal will be like right before I do a show. It's usually my first shows are like 10 a.m. So I'll make sure I eat something. So that is, from, we'll say from 5 p.m. to 9 a.m. I've gone this whole window of time without eating. Now as a vata, that's overnight. So it's not going to affect my blood sugar, but it gives you, your, your digestive system needs time every day to rest. And for vatas, we won't have that opportunity because our blood sugar drops. But for kappas, they can. But Stephanie, you were doing that. You were eating really late at night, weren't you? Yeah. And so I've had to adjust that because actually, I should say this. Okay. I'm going to blame hubby. I'm going to blame him. <laughs> I was actually doing really good not eating at night. And I would love you, last... David. <laughs> <laughs> He's got such bad habits, guys. Such bad habits. Um, I yell at him all the time. But anyways, um, so when I first started dating him, I was okay. It wasn't until later on because he is a night eater through and through. Oreos, ice cream. And I don't know. He's slim, but he's very Vata too. He's, va he's very Vata like. He's, he's Vata Kappa. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's pushing almost 40. So he's starting to get a little gut. But not not horrible. Yeah, I'm, I'm older than him, and I don't have a gut. <laughs> yeah, but you but you have a different lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I started like, you know, just lying in bed at night, just just watching TV, and he's got the snacks going, and I'm just like, and I'm a, you're not a foodie, Bryce. Um, you know me, I'm a foodie. I'm a foodie through and through. I like to cook. I love food. Okay. And that's the big difference too between Vatas and Kappas. Vata, you're not going to meet a foodie. You're not going to meet like some food uh, critic who's Vata. 
Vatas typically we eat to survive. That's it. Papas surf. They eat, they <laughs> live to eat. They love their food, which food they is an art food. form. It's an art form. So it's okay. Yeah. So to understand I got in a, I got a bad habit of eating at night. And um, so going through this whole journey of trying to adjust everything. Now I'm not doing everything overnight because that's unrealistic. What I'm doing is I'm doing little by little stopping certain bad habits and just adjusting everything um, as best as I can. And I, I've been doing pretty good. I've noticed one thing about if I'm hungry at night is a glass of orange juice during the night does one. That's a trick okay. I tell people a lot. If you feel that little like hunger, just go get a little shot of orange juice. It will, it will sustain it apple sustain cider, it. Mm -hmm. you know, something cause I, I, my body needs fruits. Okay. The raw fruit. Mm -hmm. Um, and I love, I could drink a whole gallon of orange juice. I love orange I, juice. I, I, love I love orange juice. Too. Apple cider. Orange juice. Yeah. So I love that kind of stuff. Now, the last time I bought a jug of it, my son drank it in one night. So you got to put your name on it, which Tyler is like me. He's Vata Pitta. I mean, Vata is another, another thing about Vata is we can be clumsy. Like I walk into walls a lot. I, I stump my toe a lot. And Tyler is the same way. He's worse than you. He's worse. Actually, I, what was that day when we went to say? Any hyper obsesses about things. I made a bet with him. I was like, listen, what, what was the bet? Like if I stumble more than you do, I'll give you 20 bucks or something. And if you stumble more than me, you have to watch. He's like, no, I'm not. I'm not I, and then he goes, I'm not consenting to that. <laughs> I would have, I would have won. Cause I was keeping track of how many times he went out. Oh, I was like, oh, he's, he's so bad. bad. He's, he's so really clap klutzy, really clutzy. Your hyper obsession is the Vata. So, so yeah, he's a hyper obsessor. So I will say what Stephanie was cooking for her family, which I've said before, and the controllers have put us in a place financially where this can't happen for a lot of people. But if the controllers were out of the picture, then a, a proper home, every member of the family would be eating a different meal. But which is what we're doing now. Which, but what Stephanie was doing was she was cooking foods that Tyler actually needs. So as a mom, she was preparing the foods that Tyler needs as a Vata Pitta. Collecting myself, not, not consciously, but yeah. And can but we so now, well, huh? something about, I'm going to say something about Tyler. I hope he doesn't watch. I don't want to embarrass him, but I know he was on medication for a long time that made him yeah. slow up a little bit. And since he's gone off the medication, I was, I was telling I mean, he does eat a lot. He's a kid. He's, but he's a Bata. Bata's can't eat a house and have a higher metabolism, but he's slimming out. You can yeah, see his so body coming. He's not going to watch this. He, he won't watch this, but he doesn't even know the name of your channel nor my channel. Um, and he's just pure jealous because he wants his own YouTube channel to do video games on, which I'm like, why? So anyways, um, he keeps saying, I can't believe my mom has a YouTube channel. <laughs> what oh, reality am I in? Mean, listen, MVP to that kid. He, uh, I, I'm going to embarrass him because he's a trooper. I was on the phone with Stephanie yesterday. I don't speak your phone. And someone in my life was talking to Stephanie about how, what a good kid Tyler is. And how he literally hung with us all summer. And like he, I mean, he would make snide comments. I mean, what, I'm mean, going to put this this way. What 15 year old literally wants to be hanging out with his mom and her friend all summer pulling. He's, 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 um, very sarcastic, but he's, he's funny. Very, and he's he, funny. He's, he, he could be a stand up comedian if he wanted to be. He, he hung out and I'm like, you know what? At 15, I would not have wanted to be hanging out with my mom and yeah. her and, and we were embarrassing him. We were pulling tarot cards in the middle of DC. I would have been mortified if I were 15 too, you know? And so Tyler gets the, he's the MVP of the great awakening. Like he's, you know, he has really, um, he's a good kid. And the, the person I was talking to the Stephanie was like, no, he's a good kid. Tyler is a good kid. And even my mom, uh, Stephanie, uh, Stephanie and Tyler stayed at my mom's house with me. And my mom was like, Stephanie is done. My mom is an early childhood development major. She's kids are like her life. She studies kids. And she was like, Stephanie has done such a good job with him. Such a good job with him. I mean, the kid tattles on himself. He does. He, he tattles, tattles on himself. himself. <laughs> when you ask him why he goes, well, I get in less trouble when I tattle on myself than if I get caught doing it. <laughs> he was playing with a, like a BB gun at my parents' house and he accidentally like hit the house or something. And he came in and told on himself and the house is brick. My mom went outside and she looked and she was like, there's nothing here. 
Like nothing is wrong. And then he came in and he goes, I'm too fat for the bed. My mom was like, no, that's the bed. That's the bed. But my mom was like, he's so funny. He told them, like, no one would have known he accidentally hit the, he's, the, the house. He's really he, comical. So and anyway, back he, to Yagosha. Yeah. She, Stephanie was not getting really heavy. He's I'm getting not, really heavy from the medication. So psych meds, if your kids are on psych meds and they're getting heavy, that's why. Yeah, his um, natural body is he's he's gonna be long and lanky and thin like me. His his um father, his biological father is um definitely Vatsa for disposition in terms of he's very long and lanky. Um he's not stocky like me. Like I'm, you know, you're the tits on a stick, um, tits on a stump. <laughs> Going back to our previous inside joke here. <laughs> but anyways, you know, and, and the thing is too, you know. Each body is different, so we have to feed our body all different, right? Mm -hmm. and so another like Tridosha, that. there's another friend in Stephanie in, in my life that I think is also a Tridosha. I haven't, I won't say her name because we haven't, haven't, but I've kind of watched her, I've practiced with her, and I think she's Tridosha as well. But she's a different Tridosha than Stephanie. I think she's actually got more higher range of Pitta in her just by her body type. Now, because of Stephanie's disposition with the Kappa and the Pitta, because of how that was working, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Stephanie, tell me if it's saying too much, but you were having a hard time cooling your body. Yeah, your body was I get cool. way overheated. And, and she like, thought, you thought medically you had an issue, but, but it wasn't, a, it's not, nothing is a medical issue, according to Ayurveda. You were just feeding your body, you're, the foods you were feeding your body were too heavy and too hot. And so the body- so My body had to use more energy to, to digest, to digest it. it and digest it. And so in turn, I would get hot flashes or I'd sweat or something. And it was beyond the natural human, you know, to, at my age to be overheating like that. So I have to have foods that cool me off. You need it. And that's the first thing I said to you. Now, what's the condition the medical world calls it when you sweat too much? Hyperhidrosis. Hyperhidrosis. So you thought you had that. And I was like, no, you're just eating too hot foods. Your body's just trying to work with what it's got. Eat cooling foods. And cooling foods are vata foods, salads, smoothies, fruits. So if you were to look at my, I'm going to just turn off my heater now, now that I'm getting overheated. Speaking of sweating. Speaking of that, <laughs> I have my little electric fireplace over here because I have you know, I'm not, I'm in my studio. I'm not in the house. So if you were to look at my old medical records and see the amount of diagnoses, and this is why when people comment, well, I can't work out because I have this going on. It's like, listen, I might look young, but I didn't feel young. I could pass for being much older when it came to my medical history. Like I said, there was a time I actually thought I was going to need to walk with a cane because I literally needed someone else's balance to walk. Literally, my, between my husband and my son, they would have to literally be a cane for me to walk up the stairs. And if you were to look at that medical list, there is 30 plus diagnoses on that list. Guess what I don't have? I don't have any of it. I don't. It's an illusion and I'm healing myself. I can walk just fine. I'm not... I don't have any depression or anxiety. I, I don't have fibromyalgia. I don't have hyperhidrosis. I don't have all these ailments because honestly, I either one created it for myself or two, I ingested something or something, you know, you know, yeah, I wasn't taking care of myself and I didn't know the proper way to do so. Your so body you is communicating with you. It's constantly communicating with you. And so when, when you're having fibromyalgia, you're having a hyperhidrosis, it's not a condition. It's not a medical condition. Stop it. Stop it, doctor. Stop it. Stop lying to people. Stop it. I'm just trying to figure. So I've had this, this vision in my head over and over again. So I used to work with doctors. They live in the same town I live in. So I'm thinking yeah, every I'm, time I'm the descendant of doctors and I'm like, you stop it right now. You stop. Well, every time I go into the grocery store, I'm like, see, here's where God is hilarious. God, I used to bump into these people all the time out in public going to the grocery store ever since I came to this side of the force. I haven't seen them. It's like God's joke on me. Like, oh, you just wait. So I feel like it's I'm just constantly running through my head. What would I say to them? 
what would I say to them, right? But I already know what I'm going to say. But anyways, um, do we want to go into my courses really quick? Yes. Because we're pushing well over say, an hour. Yeah, I know. I'm going to go next. But I just want to say, if you, I had that a lot with the comments again about aches and pains. If you have a body, you're always going to have something that's a little bit off. That ache and that pain is necessary. It's your body talking to you. If you have hyperpridosis, it's your body telling you you're feeding it wrong. It can't, it's creating too much heat. You need cooling foods, right? If, so not feeling comfortable in your body is not an excuse because that's literally every human being on the planet because your your body is your GPS. All right. All you do is you, you just make a job. You like, you don't have to go, like we showed the other yesterday on the recording of me and Emmy doing flip-flop yoga over there, you know? <laughs> <laughs> by the way i just want to thank all of your subscribers for the beautiful comments and not saying anything horrendous thank you of very course much. not of course not of course thank not you so much so i'm gonna share a screen because um right just like bryce i have i have created a bunch of courses um and that's kind of the trajectory i'm going into so let me see if i can pull up where is it hold on oh i know what i didn't do hold on I need to get onto the screen with my courses. You know what, Stephanie, I'm going to say this when you are, you're pulling this up. Yeah. If they're like, for me, if somebody wanted to buy me a Christmas gift, a tarot card course would be amazing. Or a pendulum course would be amazing. And we have the holidays coming up. And so she's going to pull up a bunch of courses. Like that would be such a cool Christmas gift, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, who needs a designer purse? I never cared about designer purses anyway. You know, like. So, yeah, I have thought about doing um, like coup not coupons. What is it? Gift certificates. Like that, too. Um, I don't know how to put that on my website just yet. Well, well maybe finish. we can just suggest it to people and they could email you. Just don't overfill my emails because I'm terrible about even looking at them. In the how about this? How about this? How about this? For those watching right now, if you think that's a great idea for a gift certificate, even if you're not going to buy one, but you think that's a great idea that she should do that, put that in the comment section below. All right. Let's go back to share screen. Why doesn't it want to do it? Oh, here we go. Okay. So here we are. I'm just going to move that over a little bit. Okay. So I have, I have blocked out all my future readings, which are these ones right here, these ones in gray. Because going forward, just for the time being, I need to really focus on my courses um, due to some issues that arose with my private readings. And I wasn't going to announce this, but I had several no-shows and then um, no responses from those no-shows. So when I emailed them and, you know, I, I do have a reminder that goes out 48 hours in advance automatically. And then in the middle of the no show, I still email that person with another Zoom link and say that I'm waiting and still, you know, I'm not going to tolerate that. So unfortunately, that pushed me into wanting to do my courses more because I had already started my tarot course. And I'm going to be honest, I thoroughly enjoy teaching even more so than giving great private readings. people to you're working with. Yeah. Um, yeah, my, my first tarot course that I, we're almost done with it. We're going to be finishing up on Tuesday. Um, I'll probably stay in touch with those ladies going forward because they are freaking kick-ass people. Okay. I'm just going to say, I, I was so blessed to have such an amazing class of just amazing, really, really, uh, just people who get it. They get it. And, and that's the thing. Like, I want people to take these courses who are really serious about understanding this stuff, right? So you told me after the first course that because I know part of your course, people have to exercise, they have to take care of themselves. And you're like, Bryce, they were already doing it. Oh, yeah. Most of them are already doing uh, either bar. Actually, I think most of them are doing bar. They're already. I One of them was like, yeah, I cry every time I work out. I'm like, yep, you're doing it right. So, I mean, they were they were a step ahead of where I was going to teach. So it was like, that made my heart so happy when people are helping themselves. I get happy. Okay. Same. Like I, I know, it, it's such a joy to me. I get, okay. um, I get so many people emailing me, telling me that they're getting up at Brahma Morton now. And, and they're doing like 30 minutes of bar or going for walks and like how much has changed their lives. And that makes <laughs> me so effing happy. I'm so, I get, it makes me emotional. Like, 
I know the journey y'all are on and I'm so happy for you. And the fact that a lot of these people that email me were told like Stephanie at some point, like you're too sick or you're too heavy or you too this. And they're just like, nope, I'm going to do it. And I'm just like, yes. What is it? They say, yes, queen. Yes. Like you are doing it. You are taking control of you. And you're, that's part of taking your sovereignty back. And it makes me so unbelievably happy because this, this human spirit is so resilient and you are proving that to yourself. You can't feel powerful yeah. until you've at one point felt powerless. And I am so honored for those who are doing it. I am so honored to be on the same side of this battle with you because you, the new people getting up at 4 a.m., even though I've done it for years, you're inspiring me too. Yeah. Your dedication it's, is it's, also inspiring. It's great. And all of us doing this, this together is, is actually healing earth. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's raising, we're all raising our consciousness and our frequency and vibration all together simultaneously. That's, that's beautiful right and there. So no we need to continue growing this. The people you're influencing, you have this no should idea. Be, this should be the truth or movement. It mm -hmm. should not be about the intel. It should not be about the uh, military back channel post. It should be literally doing the work. And this, yeah. this is what it's all about, us consciously doing it together. So, okay, let's look into this. So we have my tarot course here. Okay, I'm just going to go into the booking page real quick here so I can show you guys. I'll be, I'll be as quick as I can with this, Bryce. So this is for serious um, people only. This is an intense and accelerated course for beginners who are interested in learning the art of tarot and expanding their intuition to provide readings for others in the future. This course will be taught over a course of four weeks, which is a two-hour course class weekly from start from the start date you register for so we're going to go into brief history of tarot spiritual grounding grounding hygiene shadow work which is that exercise piece and uh, a few other things i added in there i have a whole syllabus by the way the syllabus does get sent out immediately after you register through the email um i go over what we're going to learn at every single week and I've made adjustments since my last class because I couldn't fit everything that I wanted to in that first class. So it rolled over to the second class. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, cleansing your space and your cards, how to smudge, um, resting cards and why this is necessary, code of conduct of a conduit, universal law, blessing and protecting your cards, the meaning of all 78 cards in the tarot deck, the three card spread, aspecting cards and clarifying cards. So this is beginners. There will be a more advanced course to come soon, which we're going to go through like the Kachina knife spread and a few other spreads and more or less the reversal meaning of cards. OK, so that's that. Um, now we have the recorded beginners course. OK, recorded beginners course is going to be uh, a five week period. Um, each week you will get another recording. The first uh, part of the course is a vocal recording with me. All the other uh, parts of the course will be by video. It's not going to have my beautiful face on there, but it will be showing my cards. So you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'll have the, I'm going to have my other camera pointing kind of like how I do with my elemental readings. Um, so it's, it entails the exact same thing. Um, homework is given for these classes. It is, I, mean, I don't force exercise. I highly recommend it. And we go very intensely on why. And it's the same thing that we've been talking about. I can't force anybody to work out. If you want to be a delusional tarot reader, that's your business. But if you don't want to be delusional and, you know, you want to be working on yourself at the same time, I'm going to be honest. I would never go to a tarot reader that's not exercising. I, I wouldn't just wouldn't. I wouldn't because either. I've seen people go delusional with divination. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, you know, that's for the beginner's tarot course for the recording. Now, the recording tarot course, you're not going to get as much as you're going to get in the actual live tarot course only because it's recorded, okay? Therefore, you can't just ask a question and get it answered right away, okay? Can you email me questions? Absolutely. But of course, you know, it's not going to be an immediate answer. So that's something you do lack. This is more or less for people who necessarily can't afford the full tarot course or their schedule conflicts with when I schedule the tarot course. Or if you're on the other side of the world, I had a few people from Australia, New Zealand, and in the Netherlands that wanted to get a recorded um, tarot course because they couldn't um, obviously work it out with their schedule um, and mine because we're on two sides of the world here. We have the beginner's uh, pendulum course. And what this entails is um, the beginner's 
Pendulum course is for those who have no experience using the basic pendulum. This course is about 45 to 60 minutes in length for a class, depending on questions. Um, so this is a pretty short class. It's just a one time only. This, we do cover grounding and spiritual hygiene, of course. That goes with any of my divination courses. How to clean your pendulum, how to connect with your pendulum, basic yes, no, maybe question, uh, basic pendulum uses, what not to use your pendulum for, the difference between using a wooden metal, metal or crystal pendulum as well. We and do that's practice. an important course, guys, because people are going that shit wild they go loony with with pendulum stuff Pendulums yeah so are not going to be read on other people guys only you so yeah so yeah we do cover a lot of that we also practice i i help and guide you if you're having issues getting your pendulum to move and on and kind of give you a heads up on what you can do um if that continues um this is the intermediate pendulum course um, this is for um, it, this is an advanced pendulum course for those who want to know how to work with a pendulum, but would like to know how to douse on a dousing board to get more advanced answers. Beginners pendulum course is strongly recommended prior to signing up for this course, unless you know ba basic pendulum use. Okay, um, I will be reiterating um, grounding and stuff like that with this course as well. This course is going to be a two-hour workshop and will require you to have a wooden. Um, or metal pendulum um, to douse. You could have a crystal uh, pendulum, but it is it is recommended to have a wooden or a metal pendulum. This is a metal um, pendulum, guys. That's what that looks like. Okay. We will be uh, learning the importance of shadow work when dousing because people can get really loony when it comes to dousing. And if you're not grounding, you really can lose your mind. I've yeah, seen it. Can. So Basic I, I, yes, no on the board, how to channel somebody with their consent. So this would be like, let's say hubby comes over to you. Can you ask what food I need to be staying away from? Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to show you how to channel another person that's next to you with their consent. Not none of this, just getting gossipy um, answers from, from other people's, you know, energy. But they're not true. That's the thing about, I'm going to extend this with, with channeling other people or doing pendulum of cards on other people without their consent. You're not getting a correct answer anyway. That's all spirit yeah. works. So all yeah. these tarot card readers you're watching that are channeling and other people without their consent, you're not getting the correct information anyway. Spirit's yeah. not going to give them the correct answer because they didn't ask their permission. They're, they're protected. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, their energy is protected. Yeah. We're going to go into cleansing, um, and dousing, cleansing your dousing tools and why we cleanse them. What do we and do not douse for? Practice at the end of class so you can get like actual sentences on your board and such. My other two courses here are quite interesting. I wasn't actually going to put these up here until later on. And you know what? I felt very much led to do so. So I have been dabbling into herbalism for a couple of years now, even before I had a YouTube channel. I have made my own herbal medicines, tinctures, um, uh, skincare, and... Um, oils okay that are um, medicinal now i have to put a disclaimer on both of these next courses because this is not medical advice okay i'm not telling you how to make medicine or anything like that and you would, should always see like a ayurvedic specialist an herbalist that's actually licensed um you know for any kind of medical advice <coughs> but we are going to go through the common herbs that you know most light workers or herbalists or whatnot use and the medicinal uses of those herbs and plants we're going to go through the planetary and elemental energies of each plant that it is associated with because that is important if you're working with them for magic purposes um planet uh now planet plant gender because yes they, they have genders magical uses drying of your herbs and methods how to uh, methods of making herbal remedies and um uh why you would make a certain remedy with something specific okay um but if you want to get even further into it i label this one potions and no we're not doing black magic i just want i just want to have herbs here guys i got all dried out <laughs> herbs and i have so i have all these little bottles right here all these little bottles of dried herbs. <laughs> I don't know if you ever saw this, Bryce, when you were here. Oh, no, bottles. but I've got, I'll show you. I can move the camera. I mean, this stuff is serious, guys. This is what we use. 
Whoops. Oh, my desk is about to almost pop my desk. Uh oh. Speaking of Robert the doll, as we did this morning, my desk. Yeah, I'll show you guys if you can see. I don't know if I can. My whole desk down here. I've got like all sorts of herbs and crystals yeah. and stuff that I use all the time <laughs> with stuff yep. usually. So. This is a three hour workshop. Actually, both herbal workshops are three hours, just a one time three hour workshop. Um, it's on Zoom. Um, by the way, with all of my longer workshops and everything and tarot course, you do have a bathroom break in there. By the way, I don't make you just hold it. Same with the yoga course as well. Um, so this, this is a, a workshop on um, herbal tinctures, herbal teas, herbal bombs and ointments, herbal oils, and also spiritual oils. Um, and again, this is more or less, and it says for magic, but honestly, this is, um, you know, I'll just show you here. I'm just going to use yours as an example. I made Bryson oil um, for uh, healing. And this, um, it's not anything she's going to ingest. What she would do is anoint herself. It's anointing oil. So all the herbs that I placed into this, and it's still not done. I'm going to put crystal chips in it to um, spice it up a little bit. But this oil, you, you like a little label? <laughs> Rice oil. So Rice oil. every herb that I put in here, is aligned with her horoscope or like her zodiac. Um, it's aligned with her energies. Um, so that I studied the herbs and understood where the energies are coming from. And also too, a lot of these herbs are alignment with healing energies like uh, Venusian energy, Venus energy, right? Because she wants to go back to Venus. We know this, okay? We've heard this thousands of times. So this, this, this is going to be something and, and I did put some essential oil in here to make it I forgot which one I chose, but it, the uh, essential oil is also lined up with her Zodiac um, and uh, just her planetary whatever. So we're going to go into that as well. And I've been studying this stuff for quite some time. And I just, I really want to help people learn how to, you know, there's not, when you make an oil, you know, I also have made like deity oils and stuff like that, but there's no major wrong way to do it, but you definitely want to align you're teaching people certain. how to help themselves. Yeah. If you want to make an anointing oil, let's say for yourself or uh, like, for instance, if you want to make your best friend, like, like I'm making, you know, Bryce over here, her, you know, for Christmas per se, you know, a, a nice little oil to anoint for healing, or let's say somebody's going through some financial troubles or something like that. I don't ever suggest doing a, a spell to bring in money because that's, that's kind of a, polarized negative type of thing but let's say someone's going through a really hard time and you put your intentions into the oil to help this person heal and figure out you know stuff in life and everything like that you know i think it's a nice gesture to make something homemade like that plus come on this looks really pretty yeah it's got uh this one has like sandalwood i think frankincense and myrrh is in there it's got sage I mean, it's got yeah. Palo Santo in here. That was one thing that was true in the Bible. Yahshua was born. They did bring him frankincense and myrrh. Why? That's an oil. Why, oh, guys? This is, all, this is all part of the teachings, the true teachings yeah. of Yahshua. You keep talking, Stephanie. So, I'm going to go turn my fan on. Okay? Okay. So, anyways, so these are the different courses. The prices are up at the top here. Um, it's not going to ask for a payment as you register for the course. I get a um, text message when you sign up for the course. From the time you sign up, 24 hours after you have, that is when you go to, um, if you go to the, uh, the booking page, okay? My PayPal information is in here, okay? I also, every cancellation payment policy is the, the same, okay? Payment is due 24 hours of registration via PayPal to hold the spot. I'm having issues with my Venmo. Once I get my Venmo back up and I'm going, I'm going to also try to get cash up too. I'll, I'll be adding those, those at a later date, but I'm having issues with that one. So just like Bryce's course, it is limited seating. Any cancellations that are seven days or less before the course starts is non-refundable. However, it can roll over into the next scheduled course. If it's not scheduled yet, don't panic. It will be scheduled in the future. I'm kind of going month by month on these, okay? 
Um, if you do cancel um, so, uh, before the seven to le um, or less days before the course starts, the refund, you have to go on PayPal and request the refund. That goes for my private readings too, by the way. People have like emailing me, I need my money back, but I haven't gotten requests. I don't want to refund the wrong person. And a lot of people don't go by their actual name on PayPal. Right. Okay. So, you know, you have to request it. Plus you have to cancel in the Calendly website. So there's two different things you have to do. And I spell it out here. Um, and actually more of the details goes in the email that gets sent to you. So please check your email immediately after you register for a course, you will get an automated email with more details on everything including a Zoom link. Now, if for some reason you don't get a Zoom link to a course, which happens sometimes, especially during that delightful Mercury retrograde, because that happened a lot, do not email me. Don't panic. I send another one anyways the day of the course, that morning into the late morning of the course, okay? So you will oh, get another one. Let me um, clarify that too with my people for the yoga course. In, the, in my introduction, I say I'll email you with the link to Sri Swami so she's on his website as soon as you register. I know sometimes I don't get to send those emails until like a day after you've registered, depending on my filming schedule. Um, so if you if you have registered and paid for a spot in the yoga course, you have a spot in the yoga course. Okay. So don't worry and think that because you haven't heard from me that you didn't get a spot. Mm -hmm. The minute we're full with spots, the registration page will come down. Okay. So don't freak out. Thank you for bringing that up, State Stephanie. Sometimes I'm not doing an automated system because I want to be able to like really understand who I'm talking to. So just, just give, just be patient. Um, I understand I get stressed out about that stuff too. So I understand I had a, I had a student get a little stressed out. I would be the same way if I paid for a spot and it was like, Oh shoot, I haven't heard from her. Oh my gosh. Is it, I would do the same thing. So just, just don't worry. Um, it fills up the email and then we're not getting to the, like, I, I try to answer emails a little bit a day, yeah. um, especially lately. And it, when I get an influx and please do not email me until do not email me videos. I don't, I don't care. Just yeah, don't care. I can't, I don't, I don't watch the same, same. I don't, well, I have a separate email for the yoga course um, that I've asked for only to email me about the yoga course on that. So I can keep myself organized, but I'm the same way, Stephanie. I don't watch videos of anybody's except yeah, for like, I just don't even yeah. care. I've had so and I, I've, t I've told people literally, and they still continue to do it. So for those people, you need to stop because I, 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 I'm deleting it. I just can't. I don't have, number one, I don't have the time. And number two, um, I've, I've said it for six months now. And it's just like, if you guys aren't understanding, like, I just don't care about Intel. I just don't. Mm -hmm. um, Bryce and I know a lot more of what's going on than we actually say anyways. Um, but we, we're not Intel channels. We're just mm -hmm. not Intel channels. So, therefore, I don't, I don't. I don't care. And I don't care who is putting out what I don't care who's smearing my name. Um, I don't care if someone's talking bad about me. I, if, if I'm sure you Bryce too, it's like, we don't care anymore. So um, I'm not trying to be rude either. It's just well, like, no, these emails are specifically for these businesses. Yes. And I will say too, first of all, I don't, I don't have time to watch all these videos. I just don't have time because I'm filming multiple times a day. I'm researching for hours a day and editing takes and editing, like six hours yeah an hour video takes me six hours to edit because every 10 minutes takes one hour so i literally do not have the time to watch all these intel channels most people who are authentically running two their deer channel, running just two giant deer running through my yard sorry Oh, that's the intel I care about. <laughs> so and yes i am lucky because i do have military contacts i absolutely do so i I do know what's going on. I do know exactly where we are. 75% of what you hear on these truther channels are bullshit anyway. They're not true. And I'm going to say too, back to what we were talking about in the beginning, especially when they're pushing a negative agenda like doomsday. Doomsday. Yeah. So we're trying to, yeah. So guy, I don't even have a chance to watch my friends' channels half the times. Like I would. I don't watch, watch Bryce's channel most of the time. However, I'm in the middle of your mystery Monday. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I tell Stephanie sometimes not to watch some stuff because we're going to do car readings on it later. So I'm like, don't watch. Just don't watch, girl. Um, so I just you know, don't have time. Even yeah. like before I made a channel, you were the channel I was watching. I'm very select. When I do watch something, I'm very selective. I love Cliff High. I'll watch him. I love Cliff High. He's been talking a lot about karma, too, and working through it. And so he's yeah, saying, he put together his last videos. You sent me. It was pretty good. 
I, I'm going to be honest. If I'm watching any videos, that's not Bryce or watch rewatching something I put out, which sometimes I do just to make sure, you know, that I'm still in alignment with God and everything. Cause I'm a big critic of myself. Okay. Um, I watch puppy videos. I watch, um, mysteries. Mm -hmm. I like mystery archives channel that Bryce. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Cody, like, I watch Cody, Cody, channel. Cody if yeah. you're watching, um, we need to get Cody back on. Yeah, because I actually, you, you know what? Thing off Long Island. You know what I should do? Because I we talked about the Sally House this morning a little bit on um Miss on uh, he's been to the Sally House, so I should text Cody and see if he'll come on Aquarius Rising Africa with us when okay. we cover the Sally House. Not to put Cody on the spot on a, on a video, but, <laughs> um, but like this is the stuff that I don't even watch. I don't watch truth or videos. I just I I don't. To me, there's nothing in it anymore. Once in a while, and I, then I of course watch other tarot videos. Um, I watch number one, yeah, like like uh, Rachel Photon. I love Rachel Photon, but yeah. the, the truth or tarot readers, the only one, and according to the military, the only person getting it right is Stephanie, and that's why none of these other tar tarot no channels. No pressure, Stephanie. No pressure. But that is why the other truth or tarot channels, none of their predictions have come true, guys. None of no. them. I don't, I don't read on Intel anyways, nor do I want to. I originally was going to, and then I didn't realize, but I was ignorant at the time. I wasn't experienced enough to understand law of the universe and stuff like that. So I, I you know, I haven't done my elemental videos either lately because they take up a lot of time. So I'm trying to put together collective videos that are not no, necessarily Zodiac. I figure everybody at least can watch the readings, right? Yeah. So I'm, and I'm going to try to be putting together, um, or not putting together, but doing more lives. So last live was funny. It was funny. One day I'll put, maybe for Halloween, I should dress up as a big old tampon. <laughs> or just come on the channel with tampons up your nose. You I'm know, you could wrap day. yourself in toilet paper, put a string on the top of your head and call yourself a tampon. I mean, I do forget sometimes I have the men and I go to go and do them. I'm like, oh shit, is there pulling on? <laughs> so it works guys it's a life hack it works we're almost pushing two hours i know thank you guys for sitting through this um but with the end i mean this is what i'm going to say too just to close it off guys what if just to play just put a little scene in your mind what if some of these intel channels are infiltrators and are intentionally putting stuff out there to stress you out so you don't work on yourself so you continue to live outside of yourself and, and we're going to do a November 30 day challenge. It's going to be separate from the yoga course. It's going to be completely free where I'm going to put together at things to do every day. And part of that is going to be only select one or two truth or videos to watch that day. Spend the rest of the time. I mean, I want, can I add on to that, to that challenge for a second? Yeah. If you want to choose two people, two winners out of that challenge to get a free half hour reading with me. Well, I'm going to do, I was going to ask you and I was going to ask Emmy, um, I've, I've talked to Cindy's good. So what we're going to do guys, let's just close it off with this. This is actually inspired by Marnie Alton. I, I, I messaged Marnie Alton. I'm hoping to get her on the channel because I fucking love that girl. She gets it. She might not have the intel and the truth about some politicians we have, but she fucking gets it. Doesn't she, Stephanie? She oh my God. What, what she gets the body. She understands the body. She understands what shadow work is. She yes. gets it. Yeah, and so she, she does it. these challenges every so often for her subscribers to her. And I never do them because I'm doing yoga too and all that kind of stuff. But I, she was releasing a new challenge and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do this for Esoteric Atlanta, for our community. So what I'm going to do, guys, and I've had a lot, of, this is separate from the yoga course. So the yoga course is the $500 where it's going to be very intense. It's going to only be focused on yoga. You're going to get Reiki with Emmy. That's separate. What the November challenge is going to be is I'm going to create a calendar for the 30 days of November and every day you're going to have something to do. So like the first day I might have a link to like, a, it's all going to be free. It's going to be free for everybody for the 30 day challenge, not for the yoga intensive, but the, for the 30 day challenge is totally free. What you're going to do is I'm going to just create a calendar. And if you want to do it, I'm going to create a, a, another email for you to email me so I can send it to you. This is going to come up towards the end of October. And every day, like the first day would be like a link to Marnie Alton's 45 minute bar exercise. And then something else that first day will be do the 45 minute bar and then journal about your experience. The next day, day two, I'll have a link to like a 30 minute bar and then journal about your experience and then write five things down that you're grateful for.
The next day, day three, will be do sun salutations. I'll send a link of me doing the sun salutations. Do sun salutations with rice. Drink eight glasses of water. Go for a 10-minute walk. Journal five things. So every day there's going to be little things you're going to do. The next day will be like a freestyle day where you're going to take an hour out of your day and you can either play music and just dance in your house for an hour or go for a walk for an hour. I do that. Yeah, to do that too. Or go or go play laser tag with your kid. It's going to be freestyle for you to Ooh. be active. You can't sit around for an hour and just twiddle your thumbs and watch. You I know, love laser tag. Active. I like laser tag too. And laser tag is like being in Star Wars live. I, I love yes, laser tag. Somebody go yeah. in with my Chewbacca mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, then the next day will be like rest day from exercise, but I'm going to have you link to Shanti doing 20 minutes of sound bowl healing where you're just going to lay and listen to the sound bowl. So every day there'll be something for you to do. And this is going to help people get jumps. Cindy's going to make a 30 minute on Yusara video. Every day there's going to be a link to something different activity wise for you to experience all these modalities healing wise, but it's going to help you. You're going to have to journal every day. And then at the end of the 30 days, and this is going to be on the honor system. If you email me, I'm just going to assume you finished the 30 days. I'm going to do a drawing and the grand winner, the first prize winner is going to win a month of Marnie Alton, a gift certificate to do her platform for a total month. And then if you want to contribute some readings, if, if, if we can figure out different price systems with people to motivate you to get you through the 30 days and then to see how you feel, because so many people want to need something to help them jumpstart that. And so that's going to be free. It's not going to be um, a part of the, the online intensive. You're going to be doing it on your own without someone there to coach you, but we're going to give you the outline to help you do it. I make it a free reading because I really want people to get motivated to get off their butt and, and exercise and, and start doing shit. So if you, and I'm not going to do an hour reading. So it's going to be a half hour, but I'm thinking about for two people, like if you want to set a second place and third place winner, yeah, you know, I can definitely set that up. Um, you know, cool. Awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. I'll, again, I'm going to give you more details. Don't email me about that yet. I'm going to set up another email address for that specific chat. Every time we're all over, we're going to have 10 emails. I know. I already have so many emails, but you know, it helps me stay organized. It helps me stay organized with everything I'm doing. So, all right, you guys, thank you for sitting through that video. That was a long one. We love you all so, so, so much. Thank you so much for being the incredible human beings that you all are. And um, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, guys.